Hello! We are back with another tutorial, fellow Renoisers, and today we will be going through this thing, the Advanced Edit Bar. Uh, it's a pretty powerful piece of equipment, so let's get right into it. There is a lot to go through. And first things first, uh, you can kind of see that uh, there are a lot of options in here. We'll go through most of them, and we'll try to give you just a sense of why this thing is so powerful and how it can save tons and tons of time uh, doing a lot of uh, macro style effects uh, inside of Renoise and across uh, instruments and automation. So first things first, let's lay down a quick little pattern of hi-hats. It's nothing special here, we're just going to have it playing eighth notes and uh, go through some of this stuff. So first on here is a few self-explanatory things of what uh, you are selecting. Selection and pattern would be anything in here. Column and pattern or column and song would be any of these individual columns, effect columns or note columns. Uh, track would be the whole track. Group would be a group, say if you inserted a group with control G or whatever, then it would be everything in here, um, etc. and so on. Um, second bar is this content mask. This filters the uh, things that you are affecting through the advanced editor. So to give you a really sw a simple example right now, Let's just hit set, and then we'll hit a random number here, and apply. Oops, and we have to make sure that uh, we can do that. And then you'll see, uh, for some reason, the volume, panning, and delay column are all set to 65. Uh, we'll just undo that. So we need to filter out things so that uh, only what we want is affected and you can see I've filtered it out to volume only and now when I hit that uh, only the volume column is affected. Now this affects what you copy and paste so if I go here and the volume column is selected I'm only copying and pasting the volume. So you'll have to keep that in mind. And when you use the advanced editor bar, sometimes you can uh, do some interesting things like copying over, uh, you know, just uh, like say delay uh, column values and stuff to get things kicking in time really fast. So <clears throat> that brings us down to this cut, copy, paste thing. And this is really cool. Um, I'm just going to do a couple things to prepare for a slightly later example. But um, what we can do here is all pretty self-explanatory. We can, of course, um, go to our selection and pattern. We can cut. We can copy. We can uh, paste. And then, of course, I'm just going to delete these to give you a bit of a better example. Um, flipping just flips uh, this around. So what um, instead of the notes being um, actually probably a better thing to do would be to just to uh, select here. Okay, so when I hit the flip button, it goes backwards. Instead of uh, C, D, G, G sharp, it's G sharp, G, D sharp, C. And it just makes this backwards. So we'll unflip these. And then um, the shrink, we have eighth notes here, shrinks them in half. Expand doubles their length. So that is pretty cool. Now what's really cool about this 
is that, um, just let me draw it in here. Oh yes, of course. Uh, mix paste. Now when this is off, paste will of course override whatever's in there, right? But when you put mix paste on, mix paste will just throw it on top. So the eighth notes that I'm pasting in are mixed in with the eighth notes that are already there and then we have 16th notes which is really cool. It just lets you build up song structure really fast or, or build like more complicated patterns really quick. The other thing that's really awesome about this, we'll just draw some random automation, is all this stuff, if we select it, and we filter this down to automation, we can shrink it. Oops. We got to go to track and pattern, of course. We can shrink our automation. We can expand our automation back to normal size. Or we can flip our automation. That is awesome. That just gives you an extra thing to play with. Uh, in regards to how you approach automation, how you approach uh, doing all sorts of things. And of course, all this can also uh, apply to uh, the effects and uh, all that sort of stuff in here. So we will just put some random retrigger effects on here if I can. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, we'll just block loop. Go to selection and pattern. And, uh, So you can see that with the effect number and everything, that's all just uh, completely uh, editable with that kind of thing too. So really powerful kind of tools, um, just awesome stuff you can use to just totally like destroy your tracks or whatever. Uh, so we'll delete those and we'll go into here and we'll make some cheesy piano lines. Okay, good enough for me. So, in this node column, you have a safe mode button. Apply transpose and mirror only if every single resulting note will be within the allowed range. I have no idea what this does. I could read the manual, but uh, it doesn't seem to affect anything. Uh, obviously, we will go to our tracking pattern here just for convenience sake. Transpose. Really obvious. So let's put this down to C minus 12. Mirror. Mirror is cool. Mirror will take whatever you have and flip it around a pivot point, uh, which is whatever this note is. So our root note of this pattern is C4. And when we hit mirror, instead of going up a third, it goes uh, down a minor third and down uh, to a fifth or whatever. Uh, so it basically takes whatever you have here and flips it around. So we'll mirror it back and then we'll put a different pivot point. And you can see uh, sort of kind of neat stuff that can be done. Um, it uh, is just another way of quickly building up variation. Uh, quantize, uh, probably quantizes things. And then this nudge thing, uh, if you set it to 100, it will nudge things down a whole uh, line. But if you set it to another value, like 12, 
you can see it nudges the delay column. And then finally, uh, let's go into this instrument column. And you can see that uh, we have a instrument one, which is our piano, and we have instrument two. Now say we have everything on this track is playing the one instrument and we want to change it in the whole song. Well, that's pretty easy. Source instrument one, destination instrument two. Swap. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. That It's that easy. So you can see this is great for sort of a macro effects uh, that can give you just really, really quick ways of, of doing things um, that might not necessarily be entirely intuitive or extremely tedious. Oh, yes, there's one more thing you could do. If we go to whole song, you can actually... Uh, expand everything in the whole song and it will uh, double the pattern length and everything. And then if you double the lines per beat or half the lines per beat sorry, if you double the lines per beat then you will get double the resolution. Uh, that's a really quick way of, if you say, want to make some really, really uh, fast edits or something and um, you need more resolution, you can just do that to your whole song and just it will explode out and be double the length. Uh, and then this volume pan delay effects. Uh, this is... Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, we will just go to track and pattern and this can uh, be set. So now everything's triggering at 65. We can add. We can subtract, multiply it by a set amount and divide it by a set amount. And then this humanize button, uh, if we just put everything back in here, everything's centered around 40. So if we use uh, the track here and we go humanize, we get some values that are sort of close to uh, what we have in here. But if we use this for the humanize and we crank it up and hit apply, uh, this controls the uh, randomization uh, factor. So as you can see, we've cranked it way up here and now our values are not even close. They're all over the place. So this can control or lessen the amount of humanization that's applied to, uh, uh, applied to a track or whatever when you do use the humanize function. And we change it to F and now you can see we have a more subtle humanize function uh, that's not as extreme. So as you can see uh, it's very complicated but it gives you a lot of control and a lot of uh, macro uh, functionality uh, that can help you really really just uh, do a lot of things uh, with your song very quickly that would otherwise be incredibly tedious or difficult. So I hope you will guys all use the advanced editor more in your songs. I hope it saves you a ton of time. And if you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, please leave them on YouTube or post in the thread. All right. See you next time.